and welcome to Fearless DIY Music. My name is Tristan Lass, and today I'd like to talk about the guitar that I'm holding in my hands. This guitar was a mystery when I bought it, and somehow it has remained a mystery throughout the years. I thought a few times that I knew what I had, and that I had bought, like, a really rare and expensive instrument for almost nothing. So let's start at the start. I picked up this guitar at the shop that I uh, help manage in Portland, Oregon. I bought it in, I believe, about 2010. So I've had it about 13 years. And when it came through the shop, I was like, I'd been looking for like a vintage parlor style guitar, like the real deal, something old, uh, something exactly this size, the classic parlor size. And so when this came through, it was in very bad shape. Um, I called the owner of the company. I said, hey, this guitar has floated through the shop. I was wondering how much I can buy it for. I got a really insanely good price on it because it is unmarked, unbranded, has nothing inside of it that indicates where it was made or who made it. And the thing that made me jump on this guitar really quickly was not only its age and the cool factor of the guitar, but inside of it, it has X bracing. And so the first thing that popped into my mind was, well, let's see, this guitar, just judging by it, by the, you know, it's got a zero fret on it. It's got, you know, the old school, you know, headstock. And just as general construction, I was like, this guitar is probably early 20th century. And at least that's what I thought. So, and it's got X bracing in it. So I thought in my mind, since I was working at a store where we dealt with tons of Martin stuff, I was like, maybe this is an off-brand Martin. Maybe this came out of the Martin plant as a cheap student guitar for another brand which Martin was known to do back in the day. Late 19th century, early 20th century, Martin did make guitars for other companies that were unbranded. So I thought, oh wow, I stumbled onto something that came out of the Martin factory. So for years and years and years, I floated around going, look at this, you know, I bought this for, you know, $300. Um, it has X bracing in it and it's really old. And I'm pretty sure that it's like a cheapo that Martin knocked out for somebody else. And I was like, wow, I got this killer guitar. Well, about a year ago, I started, you know, going through all of my instruments. And this is one of the last ones I went through. And I was like, okay, so I, you know, the tuners on it were just horrific. So I took, these are vintage uh, Gibson tuners that I put on it. And as I was working on the headstock, and installing the new tuners, I noticed just how terribly thin the wood was. And I had to do some repair work, and I was like, wow, that's a really flimsily built, you know, headstock, especially given that it's, you know, got to support this style of tuner. So it's not very robust, it's very lightly built. So I was like, oh, okay. And that kind of got me thinking. So, and, and, and as I've been, you know, playing it over the years, I was like, you know, I, I might want to do a refret on this or at least, you know, kind of go through it and do some fret work on it. And as I started to do that, I noticed that the frets from the 12th fret on are not evenly, are not properly spaced. Um, this fret, or right here, is actually narrower than the next one and is the same size as this one. So these frets are not in the right places. And that's when I clicked in my head. I was like, this was not made by Martin. Even on their worst day, the frets would be in the right places. So I started looking at it more closely and, you know, I got my mirror out, looked inside and I started digging around more and just kind of examining it with a really critical eye. You know, the bridge I began to look at more and I was just like, that's not, that's not production from anybody. And the conclusion I came to, which doesn't solve the mystery, it only adds more, is that this, I believe, is an early 20th century barn build. I think somebody made this guitar, 
based off of a Martin design, probably, you know, looked inside of a Martin and said, okay, well, I'm just going to like copy it. And that, hence the X bracing, because most guitars made during the, you know, the, the late 19th century, early, early 20th century in America have ladder bracing inside of them, or they'll have some sort of riff off of like classical guitar stuff. Martin was really the place to get X bracing. I mean, they, they invented it and it was really proprietary to them. So what I think is that this guitar is a barn build. I think somebody built it and cloned a Martin. And they did an okay job of it. It's not a terribly built guitar, but it's not terribly well built either. And uh, I'd just like to play it for a second. The, I'll, I'll, before I play, I'll preface it by saying, in the studio, I use this all the time. As long as I don't have to play above, you know, like the ninth or 10th fret, there is no buzzing per se, but it does get a little bit uncomfortable up here. But for playing like open chords and bar chords up to a certain point and doing finger picking up in the, you know, first couple positions, it is an astoundingly beautiful sounding instrument. It is very lightly built. This guitar weighs almost nothing and it's dried out a lot over the years. So anyway, let's take a quick listen to, well, I'll strum some chords and then I'll do a little finger picking. just has a really great tone. I mean, if you're, it, it fulfills all, I, I guess the long and short of it, even though it didn't turn out to be what I dreamt that it could be, it has been a joy to own and it's an amazing guitar just to have in my arsenal. It is a parlor. It is, you know, early 20th century. The wood has aged. It is dried out. It does all the things that you would want from a cool vintage, you know, like a Martin, you know, everybody wants the parlor Martin, you know, from the late 19th century or 20th century. That's like the dream guitar for acoustic guitar players, at least acoustic guitar players that I know. So I'm very grateful to have this guitar. I don't, I don't regret buying it. And it's just a, a, a word of encouragement to everybody out there. When you come across an oddball like this, and even if it's unplayable, if it's still relatively intact or can be restored or repaired, it's worth putting the time and effort in to get one of these old guitars up and playing. I would love it if it were a Martin, and it's not. But I do appreciate the work and the effort of whoever it was who built this guitar probably about a hundred years ago. I applaud their effort and they did an amazing job. And it's really cool that it's here with me now and it is being played and now I get to share it with all of you. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, please subscribe. The channel is definitely gaining traction. I'm very stoked about the uh, comments that I've been getting. Please, more comments. Leave comments in the, in the description below, below the description, and tell me if you have a guitar like this that you found that is just of unknown origin and is super cool, or if you have the genuine article, even cooler. So anyway, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time around. Take care.